Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to American Civil War and UK History. This is the Battle of Great Torrington, almost live. And at the moment, we are definitely live. Um, we are late, apologise, but only by an hour. I'm going to hand over to the cameraman, Anthony, who's going to film this. Thank you. Right, so, guys, you might have seen Alan Mitchell before. He is the local historian in Torrington, and he has got loads of great artifacts on the table. So he's going to talk us through what he actually has on the table from the Battle of Torrington. So take it away, mate. Okay, Darren, yeah, this is... Uh... Just a small selection of stuff that I've acquired over many years living in Torrington. Um, there, was a big, there was a lot of people at the Battle of Torrington, 17,000 men, roughly 7,000 musketeers, and the rest were cavalry and um, pikemen. That's my, mus that's my cuckoo clock on, by the way. Um, so obviously, here we have a halberd head from the Battle of Torrington. This was found near the site of one of the barricades. Um, back when I was about 16, 17 years old, my friend of mine's father, he gave it to me. This is a pike head, which is found uh, under the floorboards of Stephen Stone House when it was pulled down in the 1950s. Still got original piece of uh, wood in the shaft. It probably was, it was probably quite old during the days of the English Civil War, but it's still got original piece of wood in the shaft. Um, here we have a what they call a 17th century short sword. This was found under the eaves of the cider press in Tallyport in 1939. Um, a gentleman found it, his father found it, and gave it to me when I moved into Torrington, into Tallyport, sorry. Uh, he wasn't going to throw it away, he didn't thought it was a piece of rubbish, but it's actually a 17th century short sword. If you're a civilian and got caught with a weapon during the days of the Civil War, you could probably get strung up from the nearest tree. So that's probably why it was hidden away. And here we have a horseshoe. As I say, lots of uh, cavalry at the Battle of Torrington, so we find lots of horseshoes. I've got about 13 or 14 of these. Uh, also a belt buckle, a sword belt buckle. It was found in the river when the river bank when the river bank got washed away in the floods. Also, of course, musket balls. I've only got a few here. Um, I've got nearly 2,000 musket balls. The most common caliber being 12 bore, which is laid down by the Army Board Ordinance in 1642 means 12 balls to the pound in weight of lead. So you get 12 balls to the pound, one and a quarter ounces. Modern shotgun cartridge today still holds one and a quarter ounces of shot. And believe it or not, these are musket balls as well. These have hit stone walls. This is quite smooth, might have hit armor, we never know. These are musket balls that have been flattened out. I talk about uh, musketeers, these are the Apostle caps. Now the uh, musketeers would wear a bandolier of 12 what they call apostles. Each wooden bottle would hold a charge of powder enough for one shot on the musket and the tops would be covered with these little pewter tops called the apostles. 12 of these go down. These are pewter apostle caps lost obviously by the uh, musketeers. Also we find lots of these these are 1640s, 1650s clay pipe bowls. Obviously, the soldiers um, smoke tobacco. You can tell the age of the pipe by how small they are. And we do find these as well, these small cannibals. And what a lot of people don't realise is there are actually three battles of Torrington. The main battle was 1646, but there was a battle in 1642 where Barnstable had sided with Parliament and sent over 200 men with three cannons from one of the ships, Roll Key and Barnstable, um, small cannons, naval cannons, these are naval cannibals, and they stayed all afternoon firing cannibals at the town. They got, they lost the battle, and actually it bankrupted, bankrupted the town of Torrington, uh, Barnstable. And here we have a Civil War tunic button. And this is a bottle seal, 17th century bottle seal, from Lord Roll, so maybe one of the rich um, rich soldiers or officers were drinking wine and uh, threw away the bottle. This is a, a Roll bottle seal. People think these are clay pipes, but they're not. They're actually periwig curlers. <laughs> so you heat these up, they, another one of these on the side, and roll them in your, in your wigs, and this will make your wigs all curly. And there okay. you go. So they're the artifacts from the Battle of from Torrington, the Battle of Torrington yeah. but you have got 
really old artifact on the table, haven't you? Would we you like to you tell everyone the story behind that? Yeah, I found this when I was about um, 11 or 12 years old, walking across the fields out, out, out pheasant shooting, and I found that. That's a Bronze Age axe head. I have got flint axe heads as well and spear heads, but I can't find them at the moment. But this is a Bronze Age axe head that I found. Um, I've got loads of stuff, actually. And this is a, a mini ball. Um from a, a shooting range on Tartan Commons I found not long ago actually. The same used in the during the days of the American Civil War. Wow. Yeah. Um so this house as well has got some history behind it, hasn't it? So would you like to explain that? Yeah, the, the house was originally built in thirteen eleven. The maps the early maps of the house thirteen eleven, which is the kitchen and the workshop next door, it's the original house. This is added on in sixteen oh five. And it's Tallyport was a leper colony. I don't know whether you can see it in my garden. There's okay. a pan round. There's a little chapel out there, and that's the chapel of St. Mary Magdalene. St. Mary Magdalene being the patron saint of lepers. And the garden, believe it or not, is a part of the graveyard. <laughs> so, um, I would like to have a look outside if possible. Is that right? Yeah. Should we go outside? Follow, follow us, Anthony. So again, we're moving away a little bit from the Battle of Torrington, but we're not, we're sort of crossing over. Um, because Torrington's not just about the battle, is it? You know, it, there's other history here as well. Um, so firstly, um, so as you know, the battle was, did come past this house, didn't it? But explain this building here, because it's important, yeah. isn't it? Well, this, so building was, this, building was, this building was a smithy back during the 17th century. And um, after the Battle of Torrington, the Royalists ran away, obviously, ran down over the hill, over the bridge, I'll show you in a minute, Taddyport Bridge, built in 1269 by Walter Bronston. He's the Bishop of Exeter. Um, and the cavalry ran down, poured over the bridge. The bridge was a lot narrower back then because it was only meant for horses and people. If you had a, a cart, you have to ford the river. So obviously it's a bottleneck of people at Taddyport Bridge. And the battle carried on down here. The smithy was held by musketeers, and the old stone on the wall said, um, in memory of the musketeers who held Town Bridge, for the gentry and men of substance to make their escape to Cornwall after the rout at Torrington during the days of the Great Rebellion, February the 16th, 1645, which was old the stone was, because it, um, it was put there in the 17th century, living by the Julian calendar, invented by Julius Caesar, in the 1750s, the calendar was changed to the Gregorian calendar by today. That's why the dates don't tally. Yeah. And also, so if you follow me, um, I want to ask you about your gypsy heritage, because you've got gypsy heritage. Oh, yeah. You? So, you know, I mean, you were explaining about this earlier. So this is actually original, isn't it? Yeah, this wagon's about, about uh, 1880, early wagon. Um, so don't mind if I open No, I'm the door, yeah. Sorry, might, I don't know might be locked inside without breaking it. There's a catch inside, on it. There we go. So, just explain a little bit about your gypsy heritage. If yeah, you well, my mind. grandfather, my grandfather, my grandfather Cox, um, come from a gypsy family. He was, he was wasn't a pure gypsy. He was half blood. Um, we're watered down Romanies. This has been in the family since that time. I don't know a lot about it really, but um, yeah, but got a bit of a dark blood in me. Wow, looks amazing. Built in 1818, I completely restored it. It was rotten away, no floor, no roof, but I knew it needed to be restored, so I restored it. So again, your, your um, was it was your grandmother, did you say? Great, 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 great grandmother. So she actually lived in this caravan. Well, not this caravan. Not no, this caravan, but the, fa but the yeah, family would have. Yeah. The family would have, yeah. 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 Which I find absolutely fascinating. I mean, you get a lot of people asking about, because I took a few, when I was down here previously, I took a picture in front of the caravan and there was a lot of interest oh, yeah, within yeah. the history of it, you know, yeah, so yeah, yeah. that was good that you was able to explain that. But you actually build gypsy caravans. Yeah, well, from, after restoring this, yeah. I, 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 I restored about five or six other. I built two brand new, and I'm in the process of building another one now. There's the wheels for one for Jeff Hoffman and the ice cream man. There you go. So let's walk out onto the bridge in a minute. Sorry, no, can explain this one as well. Sorry. This one was given to me about a year ago. This is rotten. This is pulled by a car or sort of a van. Yeah. And I've uh, it was, I built the new doors and the whole front all brand new. Everything's brand new. And this is 
this was given to me, it was going to be either smashed up for firewood or restored. So I decided to restore wow. it. I mean, it's a lot of hard work, isn't it? it but is, it's yeah. worth it. Do you want to go and see the bridge down on the river? Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's go bridges. down onto the riverbank. So come, come with us. So this is the River Torridge. River Torridge, yeah. Anglo-Saxon for rough and wild. When it floods in the winter, you can see why. And it's actually unusual for us to be able to actually go down to the riverbank because normally the river's quite high this time of year. So this is actually unusual for us to be able to come down here. I've, I mean, I actually stood down here today and it was the first time I've been able to stand down here ever since I've been coming down here in 17 years. So, yeah. So there we have Tallyport Bridge. In the old days, it was known as Town Bridge. As I said, it was built by Walter, Walter Bronscombe, Bishop of Ex Exeter, had it built in 1269. Back then, the clergy was in charge of the roads and thoroughfares, and Biddeford and Barnesville was linked to Plymouth, and this was the main Biddeford and Barnesville to Plymouth Road. If you look under the bridge, you'll see a, like a secondary arch. That is, in fact, the original bridge. As I said, wide enough for horses and people. And the little slipway there would, would have been a lot wider. That's where you had to bring your carts down across the island that's like shallow and up past the church and in the side of the tower there's a little arch where you leave arms for the lepers this piece extra eight feet was added on in 1889 because of the uh, invention of the steam engine and they're getting across across the bridge and that's why the toll house is built over there to pay for the extension on the bridge which cost 90 pounds back in 1889 wow yeah. which in a minute we're going to go up on the bridge and actually talk about the battle and you'll yeah. be able to see the toll house yeah <coughs> so come on, let's go up onto the um the road. Is that it? Right over. So again, the Battle of Torrington. So for for for, for, for the guys that don't know the Battle of Torrington, we're talking this is the end of the battle down here. You know, this is not the start, this is where the Royalists are gonna retreat over this bridge yep. and this road leads to Cornwall, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 Cornwall. So and again, you you explained that obviously you've got the sharp, not the sharpshooter, sorry, the the musketeers, musketeers in there. So they're in this building, yeah, the building. and they're defending. Because you've got to imagine, people, these trees obviously won't be here at the no. time. You know, you've got to try and use your imagination through that very same window. Right? Through that, through what this window here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So through this window here, you had royalist musketeers defending the bridge. Yep. From the parliamentarians which are over the other side yeah we're and, come, trying to come over and that is the combination at the end of the battle so we're starting a bit backwards but you know we're not doing it in order anyway of course also a lot of the uh, people carrying flags and such like at the battle of torrington they were running away they're ripping the flags off of the flagpoles keeping the flags and throwing the flagpoles away to keep in their, their colors so to speak we, we hear a lot of that so talk, talk us through what's happening on that night when they start to treat over this bridge. What's, what's actually happening? So, the Royalists started losing the Battle of Torrington big time. The reason they were losing is their true commander, Richard Grenville, wasn't with them. Richard Grenville had been rude to the young Prince of Wales, the future Charles II, down in Truro and got put in a prison on St Michael's Mount. So the corn, most of the Cornish Royalists were fighting under Sir Ralph Hopton. They didn't like Sir Ralph Hopton and they didn't trust him. He ran away and all the Cornish Royalists ran away. R Ralph Hopton was in the Black Horse. He left his dinner behind. He left his uh, money behind, his plate, everything, and ran away. And the Cornish Royalists ran away. If Sir Richard Benville was with him at the Battle of Tartan, the, the Cornish Royalists may have held the town but they didn't they all ran away they come over the hill and they come down here and over the bridge but just before they got near about half a seven at night the church blew up there was a massive great store of gunpowder in the church prisoners in the church they all got killed and the church got blown up fired by a man called robert watt we'll tell the story and we'll go to the yeah church we will be telling that story tomorrow and we'll be in full kit tomorrow as well yeah. and lots of stuff coming up over the weekend over the two days so keep following um but for now we're just going to close up so obviously when the parliamentarians are, are coming in this direction the royalists have obviously run over they, they've got up a good stick 
resistance, resistance. Yes. And, and it's hard for them to get across they do they actually it, get across well, well the bridge the bridge don't forget yep was about that wide then okay so it wasn't as wide wasn't as it wide. is now so yeah. a bottleneck here people are trying to get as yeah, quickly yeah. down the pool and get away they run away yeah and there's even even at Langtree, which is about three miles away there are gravestones of cavaliers a, mu a musketeer killed by the going off of a musket after the battle of Tarnton in the in the wall there so it must have carried they must have spread out through the way they didn't know where to go and a lot of them it was dark yeah they didn't know the way they just panicked and fled everywhere through these woods um a lot of flagpoles got stuffed down rabbit holes they say and all sorts of things because all sorts of stuff there to be found to this day uh, again what we're going to do is leave you with that fault with the river torridge <laughs>